بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بأحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور والذين كفروا أولياؤهم الطاغوت يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون صدق الله العظيم One of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute is Al-Wali Wali has many different meanings in Arabic language In Quran and Hadith the word Wali has been used for many different meanings And this is why sometimes people who study those ayahs that are about wali, about wilaya, they get a little confused of who can be called wali and who cannot be called wali. What does wali mean? In reality, as I said, in Arabic language, wali has many meanings. For example, friend is called wali in Arabic language. Helper is called wali. Caretaker of someone is wali. Just like we use in marriage that a person is wali of the woman. Which means he is in charge of this thing at this time. Wilaya. Wali also means master. Wali means the one who loves. Wali means the one that you are very close to, that you can trust for all of your secrets. Wali also means cousin in Arabic language. When they used to have slaves, masters were called wali also. But this is one of those words where it has with all of these meanings, the thing that adds more Death to the word is that in many cases this word can be used for the opposite meaning also. So as it is used for master is used for a slave also. Which is the totally opposite. There are some words in Arabic language that are of that category. They, there is a category in Arabic language called Abdad. Did means Opposite of each other. Just like we use the word in Urdu also Zid. Which means you're just opposing something. You're just insisting on getting something and you don't have no proof, nothing. So this is Abdad. When one word has two opposite meaning. So Wali is one of those words where it can mean master, it can mean a slave. <coughs> Accordingly now, wherever the word is used, we have to determine according to the language, according to the words around it, according to the message before and after it, what does this word mean? In Urdu language, we use a word, Molana. And right there some people get a question that, how can you use the word Molana for a person, for a <coughs> being like us? Because Mawla is Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu waliyu alladheena amanu. Allah is the wali of the believers. Like bi anna Allah mawla alladheena amanu wa anna al-kafirina la mawla lahum. Allah is the mawla of the believers and kafirin, disbelievers have no mawla. As I said, the word mawla in these ayahs means different and in this sentence when we use mawlana, it means something different. There is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Zayd ibn Haritha radiyallahu anhu Mawlana. But he used it for a totally different meaning. 
So, the meaning that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used Mawlana for Zayd ibn Thabit radiyallahu anhu, Zayd ibn Haritha radiyallahu anhu, is one of the two things. Either he is telling him that you are so close to me that you are the one that I, I set you free. So we have that connection. So this is a slave that was freed by his master. It also could mean that close friendship and relationship. And that uh, the word Mola is used for that also in Arabic language. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word Mola repeatedly in Quran al kareem And then he also tells us, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ The believers are the wali of each other. They are the wali, they are the Mola of each other. So this is all because of the different uses of the word itself and because of different meanings that this word carries. Let us quickly look at some of the meanings that, are, that this word is used for in Quran al kareem so that we can understand our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our mawla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word mawla for himself in Quran al kareem in the sense and the meaning of Helper. Allahu waliyyul ladhina amanu. Allah is the helper of the believers. He always helps the believers. And many places in Quran al kareem the word wali and mawla is used for helper. So it's a connection between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our helper. This is to tell us that we should always put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how much people try to convince us that do this and you won't lose anything. If anything happens, I will help you. You can go against deen. You can miss your prayer. If anything happens, I will help you. You can eat this haram. Don't worry about it. If anything happens, I will help you. But no one helps when that time comes because Allah is the only wali. Allah is the only helper. And if Allah stops the help, if He closes that door, then no one in the world will be able to help. A lot of time people really mean that they would help us. It's not that they are just trying to cheat us. It's not that they're trying to make a false promise. But when the result of that thing is seen, the results are such when even that person would come and tell us, you know, I wish I could do something for you. What does this mean? That... No, there is nothing that I can do for you. So, this wilaya simply means help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a connection between a human being and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that don't depend on no one's help. Always depend on my help. Always consider me your true helper. And if you connect yourself to me in that sense, you will always see my help. This was the great message of Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, and especially what we see in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that he developed the iman of Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi majma'een on this. Their really, their iman was so strong on this topic that Allah is our wali, Allah is our helper, that in no situation, in no situation whatsoever in this world, they ever considered themselves to be hopeless. Never. Never they would feel that I got to a dead end. There is no way that I can go anywhere anymore. That's it. I don't see nothing any, in front of me anymore. There is nothing that I can do. Okay? I give up. They never found themselves in that position. We keep on reading the history. And if we start going through that, this will take up all of our time. And still it won't finish. And I'm hoping inshallah that we cover some names, more than one name and attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one session. But just quick examples, reminders of situations that I'm sure we already know. And this is why I'm going to mention only those so that we can remember the rest of the incident and we understand how this iman and this faith was developed in Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam and in the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een and thus this was the teaching of Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam to the Ummah, to me and you. Musa alayhi salatu wassalam. He is leaving Egypt. And 
Finally, they see the ocean in front of them and the army behind them. It's a situation where any person at that point would just give up. That's it. There is nothing that we can do. Give up. But Musa alayhi salatu wasalam did not. And look at the words. Inna ma'i rabbi sayahdeen. My Lord is with me. He is going to show me the path. What path are you talking about? Don't you see the ocean in front of you? Don't you see the army behind you? What other path you can find? But this is the iman. Similar situations happen at different times during the time of Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi majma'een when they see the ocean in front of them. Al-Ala ibn al-Hadrami radiyallahu anhu. One of the very, very well-known Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi majma'een for karamat. A lot of things happens on his hand. He went through the same situation. Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu said to him, Ala, continue and don't stop until you conquer this, this and this land. And he finally ends up at an ocean. And he says, Abu Bakr told us not to stop. So I'm not going to stop. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu didn't mean that even if you get an ocean, then you just jump in it. But he has the faith, he has the iman. And he jumps. And the, the whole army goes through. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu. When they were going to Persia, most of the wars took place in the Roman Empire. In the Persian Empire, large portion of it was conquered without a war just because of this. They're walking over the water and the whole army is walking, camels, horses, everyone, people barefoot, they're walking over the water. And those people look at them, they say, these are not human beings, these are jinns, let's run away. The whole army leaves. Superpower of the time. What made them go away? is these people trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nusra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At all of these battles that he went through during his lifetime, we will see, and always he's telling Sahaba Ridwan Allah alayhi wa jama'een, we are not worried about the number of people, about the preparations, about anything else. Our main thing is our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as we have that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will get the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When that trust is gone, then that's it. No difference between us and them. So, this was always the most basic teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That always keep your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is your helper and He will help you at any and all situations. By this, a mu'min will never find himself to be at any dead end in his life. I can do nothing that said I give up in my life. There are so many incidents and some, so many interesting incidents that happen in the history of Islam from the time of Sahaba Ridwanullah and throughout the history. But as I said again, that if we go into those, then we'll be just talking about those stories of that of course are very helpful in convincing ourselves and understanding and getting the lessons of our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a helper and as our nasir, the one who is the only helper for us. Inshallah, you can go through some of those ahadith, some of those stories in the uh, life of the uh, Sahaba Ridwanullah Ali Majma'een, the, the seerah is full of those. So this is one meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being our wali, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our helper. It goes beyond this. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who loves us. And for that also, the word wali is used in Quran al-Kareem. Allahu waliyyul ladheena amanu yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ila al-nur. Allah is the one who loves the helpers. And therefore, he takes them out of darknesses into nur. This is the love of Allah that brings us out of darknesses into the nur of iman, into the nur of the hidayah, into the nur of the Quran, into the nur of the sunnah. So he brings us out of darknesses into the nur. So this is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for human beings. Also, the word wali then is used for a close connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And... There are stages to that connection, there are levels of that connection. Some of the ayahs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu waliyul mu'mineen. Allah is the wali of mu'mineen, of the people of iman. So alhamdulillah, 
all the people of Iman, they have the wilaya. They have that connection of wilaya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means in, in our language we may use the word friendship, but it simply indicates to that type of connection, which means we are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this Iman. And then, as this connection keeps on getting stronger and stronger, the person's wilaya keeps on getting stronger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran al kareem Wallahu waliyul muttaqeen. Allah is the wali of muttaqeen. In awliya'uhu illa al muttaqoon. His awliya are only those who have taqwa. Those are the only ones that are his awliya. Who have taqwa, who live the life of taqwa. What does this mean? Of course, it, now this is referring to the higher level of wilaya. So wilaya has levels. Our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many different levels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our master. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that we are, that is the closest to us. But with us connecting that relationship of Allah being our master, how do we? Connect ourselves to Allah being our master. The more the person is doing the ibadah, the better of a servant he is. So now his wilaya is closer, is stronger with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are people who work in a, in a factory, they work for only an hour. They just go and clean a few things and come out. There are people who they go one day a week, they just do some of the accounting and they come out. But there are people who work eight hours there. There are people who even work more than eight hours in the same factory. Most of the days are spent over there. There are people who spend the all, who work all seven days over there. So these people are closer and closer with that with that work. They are stronger with that work. Their, their, their connection with their work is stronger according to the hours that they're putting there. Same thing. According to ibadah that we offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our wilaya will be stronger and higher. Now, there is no need for anyone to tell us how good of a wali we are. It's for me and you that we can judge ourselves and we see what is the level of our wilaya. The level of our wilaya is five minutes a day or half an hour a day or one hour a day. What is the level of our wilaya? This is something that we can judge ourselves for it. Without going into the details of what is ibadah, people who are working in their own fields to earn their livelihood, to fulfill their responsibility towards themselves, towards their families, towards the deen of Allah, they can make all of that time as part of their connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and part of their wilaya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The thing that breaks this wilaya are those things that are number one, considered to be sins. Number two, those that turn us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the only two things that will break our wilaya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, if the thing is not a sin, then it's not going to break our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, as long as that thing is not keeping us away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, to enjoy our time with our families, <coughs> sit with your children, play with them. MashaAllah, in fact, it's part of the sunnah if a person would make that good intention. But say a person didn't even make that good intention, and he was just playing with his children. It's time for salah. He looks at the watch. I can get the salah in the masjid. Yeah, but you know, I'm enjoying it. Let me play a little more. Now this becomes fitna instead of being something that is just allowed. This thing is breaking him from deen. From the remembrance of Allah. From fulfilling his responsibility <coughs> towards the deen of Allah. So things that do not break us from Allah. From the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not considered to be sin in this deen. All of these things are good and they are part of our wilaya, our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By default, every human being is wali. 
has the wilaya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember this. By default, every human being has that wilaya. Then, we break our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by sinning and disobeying Allah. We are breaking it. Allah had connected it. We came to this world, it was connected. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us many years of our life that where He is not going to hold us accountable for any of the deeds that we perform so that we don't break that wilaya from childhood. You have 12 years, you have 13 years where you can work on yourself and working on ourselves simply means He has given the parents responsibility, make sure that you work on your children so then as they come into the age of being responsible, their wilaya will be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, it will get stronger. So this is wilaya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means our connection of love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more the person lives the life of taqwa, remember this, in awliya'uhu illa al-muttaqoon. His true walis are those who have taqwa. So the more the person lives the life of taqwa, the more the person is living, is getting into the wilayah of Allah, which means as we call them waliyullah. What does waliyullah mean? It's a person who avoided sins, who avoided everything that will take him away from Allah, from the remembrance of Allah. He's a person like me and you. But this person worked on his deen, worked on his wilayah, and this is why he became such a great person. We can do the same thing. That opportunity is available to us. It's only that we are not availing it. We are letting it, letting it go. Of course, there cannot be no wilaya with Allah whatsoever without following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he is the leader of all the awliya. <coughs> if a person breaks his connection with the leader of the awliya, that's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want that person anymore. He says, you cannot be my friend without coming to me through him. In kuntum tuhibboon Allah, this is see, as I said, wilaya means love also in Arabic. And in kuntum tuhibboon Allah, if you love Allah, fattabi'uni, then follow me, follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yuhbibkum Allah, Allah will love you. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the person, then he puts the love of this person in the hearts of his awliya. This is what the hadith tells us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. Jibreel, I love this person, you must love him too. Because Jibreel has that wilaya, very close to Allah. Jibreel, you must love this person. <coughs> Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, then he announces it to the rest of the angels that Allah loves this person. All of you angels must love this person. Then Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi alayhi says, the love of this person get placed into the hearts of the awliya Allah in this world. So those who are close to Allah, those who are considered to be awliya Allah, they will have the love of this person in their heart. Which means now this person got to that level of being waliyullah. Now he is in that level of awliya Allah because he connected himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah placed his love now in the hearts of all the angels. Imagine all the malaika now love this person. Subhanallah. All the malaika love the person. After knowing this, who cares if anyone else will love you or not? If you know that Allah loves me and malaika loves me, that's it. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tells us, then his love is placed in the hearts of awliya Allah in this world also. And this is one of the signs for us to recognize ourselves that we are on the right track, is to make sure that we have, we see these people who are God-fearing people, and we, are, we know that they like us for our deeds, they know us and they like us. Because if all the awliya Allah, all the people of deen, they rejected us, this is a sign that this person is only considering himself to be somewhere where he is not there. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the very beginning of Quran, He tells us, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide me to the straight path. Which path is that? 
a path where I see myself walking by myself and alone, no one else is there? No. Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim is the path of those who are blessed by Allah. So when you are walking and you see a lot of people that are an'amta alayhim, that are blessed by Allah, that are walking with you, you can see that now, yes, I'm on Sirat al Mustaqim. But if I'm trying to convince all of the people today that look, all the people of the past that didn't understand deen. They didn't know what this deen was all about. Today I understood it. And I'm the only good person in the world. I'm the greatest person in the world. You should follow me. And I'm coming up with all of my ways now. This tells us, and this would tell every person, that we don't see an'amta alayhim with this person. In fact, he's breaking himself from an'amta alayhim. He's breaking his connection with an'amta alayhim, with those that are blessed by Allah. So how can we hear on Surat al-Mustaqeem? Whereas the definition of Surat al-Mustaqeem is, is the Surat, is the path where you see an'amta alayhim, where you see people that are blessed by Allah over there. So, this is very important to understand the wilaya, which means our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this wilaya, as I said, has its own stages, levels of connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The highest, of course, is for Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, and highest of Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam is the leader of all the Anbiya, Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is Sayyidul Awliya. So if we follow his ways, that is the first step towards connecting ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then <coughs> all the Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een, they were on the highest level of wilaya after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No one in this ummah can ever get to any level of wilaya clo any anywhere close to any of the Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een. Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een are on the highest level of wilaya after Anbi alayhi salatu was salam. And then, of course, in the Ummah people, according to their level, according to their practice of the deen. There is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari that indicates a high level of taqwa. In fact, Imam Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, have mentioned that hadith in Bukhari only for this purpose of telling people what is the high level of taqwa. And the hadith says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a person cannot be of true muttaqeen. La yablughul abd haqiqat al-taqwa. A person cannot get to the real level of taqwa hatta yada' ma la ba'sa bihi. Hadaran mimma bihi ba's. Until this person would not stop doing things that have no doubt whatsoever. There is no doubt in doing it. Normally we say it's taqwa. When there is some doubt, you leave it. But this hadith is telling us something higher. There are many different stages as I said. But this is talking about some higher level than what we normally talk about even in our talks. And when we are trying to define high level of taqwa, we say, you know, when you stay away from refrain from doubtful things, then this is taqwa. But the hadith is telling us, you need to get even beyond that. And that is things where there is no even a doubt. You know that this is halal. It's allowed. Nothing wrong in using it. But if you do this, maybe in future sometime you fall into one of the sins. Because of that, you say to yourself, you know, let me just stay away from it. I'm not going to get into it. Someday, what if I, someday I will fall into it. A lot of times we find people nowadays, they're trying to make a lot of things halal. You know, this is a Roman normal train now, the whole situation of the... The direction of the, not just the general, but the public, even the ulama and the scholars and the universities and everywhere is going in a similar direction. Find a way of making it halal. And in most of these things you would find that although we will get a fatwa of halal from somewhere, but if you look deep into it, there is somewhere a chance that if you use it, sometime, sometime, you may end up falling into something else. What if you fall into that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa this is what he's telling us, that a person cannot be of muttaqeen until he lives things that are halal, ma la ba'sabi, things where there is no doubt, where there is no question. But he's leaving those things with the fear that if I get into this, I may sometime end up falling into something else. Although this thing is totally halal. So this is higher level of taqwa. One is to 
Stay away from doubtful things because this thing by itself is doubtful means. Who knows? At the end I'll find out that this thing by itself was haram. But higher than this something you know for sure is halal. But you stay away from it with the fear that what if this will lead me sometime to something else. So this is, these are the levels of taqwa and level of our wilaya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A similar, similar name has been used in Quran and that is al-wal. وَمَا لَهُمْ مِن دُونِهِ مِنْ وَال And this is also one of the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which refers to the same thing, supporter, helper. So I mentioned it here because that name will be coming later on and it's driven from the same root word and it's referring to, it's used only once in Quran al Kareem. وَمَا لَهُمْ مِن دُونِهِ مِنْ وَال And as I said, it's driven from the same root word which means helper, supporter and uh, uh, the one who would be there for you whenever you need him. This is wal and this is al-wali. So wilaya now has a status. One is general wilaya for all the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about that. In awliya, uh, uh, wallahu wali, wallahu wali Allah is the wali of all the believers. But as I said, there is a higher level of wilaya and that is the wilaya of taqwa, of muttaqeen. In awliya'uhu illa al-muttaqoon. Walakinna akhtharahum la ya'lamoon. Most of the people don't know that his real awliya are those who have the taqwa of Allah. A lot of time a question comes to our mind. Can I be of awliya Allah? Can I be of awliya Allah? As I said, by default, every person is a wali. A child is sinless. This is the beauty of our deen, difference between our deen and some of the other religions who believe that every person is born with a sin. We say no, every person is born al-fitrah, pure and clean. So wilaya is there. And then, according to what lifestyle this person would choose for him or herself, Accordingly, either they will be strengthening this wilaya or they will be breaking this wilaya. So we all have the opportunity of having this wilaya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, depending on how much life of taqwa we live accordingly and how much taqwa, as I said, mean life of sunnah, following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, following the deen of Allah and staying away from all kind of sins, this will get us into the level of wilaya. And salihin. The virtuous people are awliya Allah. So if we be of salihin, if we do the things that are good, that are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah we are, one with one, we are one of the awliya Allah. Another attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hamid. Al-hamid is an attribute that we normally read about it every day, maybe without paying the attention to it. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen It's really the explanation of Alhamid. Alhamid means the one who is praiseworthy. The one that deserves all the praise. What does Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen mean? All the admirations. Alif Lam in Arabic language refers to all. Alhamdulillah, all admirations belong to Allah, Rabbil Alameen. A lot of times we find ourselves admiring either ourselves or admiring each other, or we admire a car, we admire a house, we admire a light, we admire jewelry, we admire clothing. If you look at the word all admirations, really there are millions of things that are admired. And we are not admiring Allah, we are admiring something else. But this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in that ayah and through this attribute, Al-Hamid. And that is, any admiration in this world, admire anything in this world, finally it will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if a person is really very professional in his work, you tell him, MashaAllah, you know, you're such a, you're so professional, you did it so nicely. And he would tell you, you know, who was my teacher? Who taught me to do this? And then he would mention some of the high name in that field. 
Just like if any person would say to Sahaba Ridwanullah Alam Ijma'in, MashaAllah, you're on a such a high level of taqwa, the answer will be, yeah, because I'm a Sahabi, I lived with Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, the admiration of the thing is because of the one who taught you, because of the one whom, who created this thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything regarding what they are. Things that we make. What is it that we are making? We are using our brain in putting things together and finally we give it some beautiful design. Put it in such a nice way that everyone that the output is so beautiful that everyone looks at it and admires it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the material. He is the creator of our brain. He is the creator of, uh, of human beings. And human beings are making all of these things. Finally, everything goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created such a brain in this human being, who gave this human being such abilities to develop these type of machines, to use this dirt in such a nice way. Subhanallah, he made the dirt in such a way that the same dirt, which we call it dirt, you can use it in such a way that it will look so <coughs> beautiful that people will travel for um, thousands of miles just to come and look at something that is made out of dirt. He made the water so beautiful that people from all around the world, they come to see Niagara Falls. Is what? If the water will stop, there is no Niagara and there is no falls. So, everything, this dirt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifies it so much. He can, when He puts the beauty into it, subhanAllah, that you see human beings made out of the same dirt. But look at the beauty of human beings. If we did not know from the, uh, through Anbiya Ali Musalatu Wasalam that we are made out of that dirt, we wouldn't even believe that something like this can be made out of dirt. But this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He puts the beauty in these things. So all admirations, they go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who created these things in such a nice way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Hameen, the one who is praiseworthy. If anyone is to be praised, is really Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is extremely important attribute for us to remember. Why? Most of the thing, most of the times the thing that misleads us is when someone admires us. And we feel too great. We feel too good of ourselves. Yes, really, I did it. It was because of me. At that time, we need to remember Al-Hamid subhanahu wa ta'ala. That really, he put that ability in me to do it. If he would not have given me the ability, there is no way for me that I would have been able to do it. No way that I could do something like this. And millions of people are there, they are, uh, they are in the world. There are millions of people in the world with so many abilities. They couldn't do it. I was able to do it. It's only Al-Hamid subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the admiration goes back to him. So whenever we are admired for any of our work, any of the good things that we have performed, always remind yourself of Al-Hamid subhanahu wa ta'ala that no, it's not me. All these admirations really, although this person is telling me, but in reality, I know that he is telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And... Another beautiful point when you look at Al-Hamid here. It is such a beautiful point in this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that makes the person feel that, Ya Allah, how great you are. I mean, ya Allah, you do everything in this world. You do everything and we get the credit for it. Subhanallah. You know how many things we try to prove that we did it and everyone says he did it. Whereas the real doer <laughs> is Allah. But Allah allows us to get the credit for it. And he does it. A doctor does a surgery on someone. And that person is cured. They come to thank this doctor, all the family members, that person himself. Thank you, doctor. You know, you did so much for me. You worked so hard. You did this, this. In reality, if this, this doctor has iman and faith, then he would think about it. SubhanAllah. 
you know, I just cut few things, I did these few things. What if after all of this he would not have been cured? I would not do nothing. I, w- I wouldn't be able to do nothing. You prescribe a medicine to someone, and that person is cured. Person is very happy. He comes and he will really hugs you, and you did so much. You know that was such a great treatment. You did so much for us, and. If we really, with our iman, if we look into deep into ourselves, we will realize, you know, I gave this medicine to ten different people. Three people were cured, and three people did not get no cure, and there were some more people who were allergic to medicine, so they got worse. I, mean, I didn't have no control over any of these situations. But now these three people, they come admire me. You know, doctor, you did such a great job. You did such... Subhanallah, Allah does it and He allows us to get the credit for it. How many times we find ourselves getting credit for such, so many things. And if we really look at it, we had no control over it. It just happened. We tried and it happened and we got the credit for it. Everyone is trying to open a door. Everyone is trying to open it, open it, open it. People are pushing it and it doesn't open. All of a sudden you come and you just turn the knob and open it and it opened. You get all the credit for it. You didn't even know what happened. This is, this is happened. This happened continu- continuously in our life. It's always happening. And this is shows that Al-Hameed subhanahu wa ta'ala, how great he is, that he is worthy of ad- every admiration, but he allows us to take it. He allows us to take that admiration and get the credit for it. And not only this, sometime when I read the attributes of Sahaba Ridwanullah, their qualities and how Allah admires them and admires the people of Iman and Taqwa, I say to myself, subhanAllah, Allah, gave us the hidayah. He gave those people the hidayah. He gave them the tawfiq to be close to the Prophet. He gave them the tawfiq to follow this and to do this and to get up and to sacrifice their sleep. It was all from Allah, his tawfiq, with nothing without it. And then he admires them that, mashallah, you're so nice you did it. This shows the greatness. You know, the father, he always tells you, his son, mashallah, you know, son, this was such a great performance. Although, it may be that father did most of the work for him. But at the end, to admire his son, and just to make him feel good about it, he says, you know, it was all through your effort. It was your effort that you were able to do it. Something is very heavy. He says to his son, pick it up, pick it up. And he picks it up with his son. And really, he's carrying all the weight, and the son is just holding it, just touching the, the, that thing. And and the father says, you know, mashallah, see how big you are, you carried it. You were able to carry this, and the son feels really, yeah, I did it. This is exactly our situation. Allah is al-hameed, worthy of all praise, and he does everything for us. And at the end, we start getting the credits, and we start getting happy. And subhanallah, as I said in the Quran, we look at the ayahs of the Quran, we find that he's admiring us for those good, good qualities. The ones that are gifted by him, he gives us. You give someone hundred dollars, and you're, mashallah, you're rich, you have hundred dollars. <laughs> this is what it is. He gives us tawfiq, we do the prayers, we do the ibadah, we do the dua, and he admires, mashallah, you're such a good person that you're doing salah. So, this shows the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he is hameed, he is praiseworthy, and he's so great, that he doesn't even expect us to give him all of that. He says, okay, you know, mashallah, you're good, you're good. So, but in reality, we need, to, we should never forget this reality that whenever we are admired, whenever we are, we ha- we get some, uh, we do something, we have an achievement in our life. Always remember, Al Hamid Subhanahu Wa Taala. Never be misled by Shaitan. Shaitan uses that opportunity of trying to convince us, you did it. A lot of time feel we feel I did it because of my knowledge, because of my degree, because of my strength, because of my intelligence because of my ability, because of my power of speech, because of my power of writing, whatever ability that we have, we think we got it because of that. This is what Qarun thought. قَالَ إِنَّمَا أُتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي He says to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, you are telling me to pay zakah and sadaqat from this wealth and fear Allah. What do you mean? I got all of this through the knowledge that I have. 
This is one of the shaitan's tools. And al-hamid will be a great, one of the greatest cure for that disease when we feel, when instead feeling something about ourselves, remind ourselves, no. It's all from al-hamid subhanahu wa ta'ala. All praise belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> I'm